Welcome back. Back to one of our top stories right now. The countdown to tomorrow's total solar eclipse has reached a fever pitch across North America, but it's not the only exciting thing we could see in the sky tomorrow. For more on that, we're joined live by Elena High, director of the Allen I. Carswell Observatory at, and a professor at York University. Thanks for joining us here live on CP24. What are we talking about here? There's more than just the, the eclipse. What's going on? Yeah, so tomorrow is actually, uh, as many, most of you know, I hope, a eclipse happening in Ontario, going through a large part of North America. Um, but for the very, very uh, few people who managed to, or the lots of people who managed to squish themselves into that thin line of totality where the sky goes uh, dark, and of course the uh, the really spectacular eclipse show happens, there are some other interesting things in the sky at the same time. Some of them you can see with binoculars. And uh, some of the planets, the bright planets like Jupiter and Venus, might be visible to the naked eye once the sky goes dark. So again, uh, please don't look up at the sky or the sun in particular without some sort of protective uh, uh, glasses or something over your face. Um, but if you're during totality, and again, this is in some places only 30 seconds um, in Niagara Falls of course they've got over three minutes the sky does go dark and if it's clear and you don't have too many lights around you um, you might be able to make out some stars some constellations and some of the planets and they'll actually all be out there we have a, uh, a wonderful conjunction um, lining up we have uh, in order. So just from the sun, we have Mercury, Venus, and then, uh, of course, we have Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And they're all out there. Uh, uh, Uranus and Neptune, you definitely need binoculars to see, mm -hmm. but they're actually in a line with the eclipse uh, during totality, as well as a wonderful comet that's flying through our solar system, uh, the 12P Pons Brooks Comet, which is going to be just to the side of Jupiter, sort of flying towards the sun on a 71-year uh, periodical orbit, so it's not coming again until 2095. Hmm. Okay, wait. So how, how can you physically observe all these if you are wearing the glasses? And from what I understand, um, speaking with uh, people in your field, that if you're wearing the glasses, which you should be doing if you're looking up at the sky at that time, you're just going to see you know, an outline of the sun, and then you're going to see, obviously, the moon cover it. Um, but how are you going to see the planets? So this is one of the great things about the area of totality. And again, uh, please be cautious. This is only in the, uh, the that narrow strip of land uh, that has totality. So the sky will need to go dark. And that's where the moon has completely blocked the light from the sun. And once totality has happened, uh, the sky has, has gone dark, you will take off your glasses if you're in that region. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to look up with your eyes. And this is only during totality, so <laughs> Please don't do this during any partial phase, but you'll be able to look at the sky. And if it's not too cloudy, uh, you might be able to make out some of these bright planets like Jupiter and Venus with your naked eye, maybe Saturn as well. And if you've got a pair of binoculars or a, uh, a camera or a small telescope, you will probably be able to make out a Mars and uh, um, maybe even Uranus, Uranus and Neptune, of course. The comet Pons Brooks is, we think, going to be around magnitude four so it might be just visible um, but definitely visible with binoculars and this is a, a just I mean you couldn't have planned more fun objects to look at if you were an astronomer right and I, I know it sounds weird me asking this because you're an expert in this but how are we supposed to point out oh that's Jupiter like how if you, if you don't have binoculars or you know a, a good enough telescope obviously Saturn has the rings but will you be able to see those uh, with the naked eye to point out Saturn uh, not the rings. Okay. All right. um, so what you'll see in the sky are, of course, um, you you have uh, bright points of light. We're so far away from these things that they just look like little dots. But the planets are distinguishable from stars because they will be twinkling less, and they will also be much brighter than most other objects. So in particular, the the line of the planets Saturn, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, everything is in a line of the ecliptic, which mm. is going to be in line with the eclipse. So you can follow your bright objects along hmm. and look for the bright points of light that are not twinkling as much as the background stars. And those will likely be your planets. Um, if you want to cheat a little bit, you can also use a free online app uh, like the Stellarium Web Org um, site, which is free. Uh, or you can bring a, uh, a, a planisphere or a star chart with you. Wow. That, that honestly, like eclipses are cool, no doubt. But like that coupled with all this, 
There's a lot going on. So people in Niagara Falls, another reason to probably leave today uh, to get there because it's going to be, yeah, that three-minute totality is going to be now, you know, very eventful. All right. Uh, not that the eclipse was enough, but we do have to boogie, though. Uh, Elena, Elena Hyde, uh, director of the Allen I. Carswell Observatory and a, and a prophet at York University, my alumni. Thanks so much. We do appreciate uh, your insight on this. And thank you for letting us know about the extra stuff to look at. Absolutely. Clear skies, everyone. Yeah, let's hope. Not looking great.